Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the management levels and hierarchy in Azure. Let's start from the bottom of hierarchy as that's what most of you are going to deal with in your day-to-day -day work and then move our way to the top of hierarchy so the relationship is crystal clear. At the bottom of hierarchy we have resources. Resources are instances of services that you create. It is an entity that is managed by Azure. Some of the examples of resources can be Azure virtual machines, virtual networks, storage accounts, SQL databases, and so on. Next in the hierarchy is resource group. As the name indicates, resource groups are logical containers where you can deploy and manage Azure resources. In the diagram on your screen, there are basically three resource groups with different types of resources. Next in the hierarchy is subscription. Subscriptions logically associate user accounts with the resources that they create. Organization can use subscriptions to manage costs and the resources that are created by users, teams, and projects. So for example, each department in an organization can have their own subscription to isolate their resources from another department. At top of the hierarchy is management groups. Management groups help you manage access, policy, and compliance for multiple subscriptions. All subscriptions in a management group automatically inherit the conditions that are applied to the management group. Now, as you can see on my screen, management groups can be nested. There can be some scenarios where organizations require multiple management groups. Some of the examples can be a production versus non-production workload segregation, internal services versus external services segregation, in the above example, you can see we have a root management group under which we have some management groups for different departments. And then some subscriptions are also there at the first level of hierarchy. And then the nesting of management groups continues. But there are some important facts that you need to consider when creating management groups and their nesting. Let's look at those facts in more details. You can have up to 10,000 management groups in a single directory. Management group tree supports up to six level of depth, which doesn't include root level or subscription level. Management group can have single parent, but multiple children. On the other hand, subscription can have just one parent. Similarly, let's look at some important facts around, around subscriptions. You can have up to 980 resource groups per subscription, and you can apply up to 50 tags to a subscription. History of only 800 recent deployments per subscription is available. As soon as you reach this limit, the oldest deployment is automatically deleted. Now let's look at some of the important facts around resource groups. You can have up to 800 resources per resource group for a resource type. However, there are some resources on which this limit is not applicable. I'll share the link to the exempt list in the description of this video so, so you can go through those services. Just like the resource group history of only 800 recent deployments per resource group is available. As soon as you reach this limit, the oldest deployment is automatically deleted. And one thing to note is deleting the history doesn't affect deployed resources. You can create a maximum of 800 resources per deployment. 
and can have a maximum of 50 tags per resource. Let's head to Azure portal to have a look at how you can create a management group and manage the subscription resources and resource groups. So now we are in the Azure portal. First thing you need to do is, you can probably in the search bar, search for management groups. For me, it's showing at the top because I have browsed this earlier as well. Once you are in the management group console, you can look at your existing management groups and what are the subscriptions that are inside that management group. So currently I have a tenant root group, which is the top level of hierarchy. And my current subscription are, is under the tenant root group. So let's try to create a management group. Just hit click. You'll get option to enter your management group ID, which cannot be updated after creation. So let's put it probably demo MG. Then in the management group display name, let's put demo management group and hit submit. So it should trigger a deployment in background. You can see in the notification tab that it's updating group. It should take few seconds for the management group to be created and be visible in the console. Let's just give it a few seconds. Yep, so we have our management group created. You can see once the deployment got completed, the console auto refreshed. However, you also have an option to manually refresh it. So we can see our demo management group is now showing. Let's try to open this management group. Yeah. So here you get an option to create and to add a subscription as well. So if I click on add subscription, it will let me move an existing sub subscription to this child management group basically, because the parent is the root management group. So I can select my subscription and then just click save. It will move the subscription to this management group. I won't do that at this point because I just have one subscription and I don't want to move it at this point. But let's go and have a look at how the subscriptions look like. Similarly, you'll have to type subscriptions in the top search bar and it will show up under in the services section. Once you are in the subscription pane, click add and you'll get the different type of subscriptions that you can request for. So as you can see, there are lots of subscription. Now going back to the slide which I was sharing earlier in this session, you could see there were dev and test subscriptions and there were production subscriptions. So that's how you, you create your subscriptions. You have an option to create a free trial. You have an option to create a pay as you go subscription. You have an option to create a Visual Studio Enterprise subscription, which currently I am using. You can also create a Visual Studio Professional subscription. Most of the subscriptions that the organization use are at the bottom of the screen, which is professional direct support and MSDN platform support, subscription support. So the, the, the professional direct support is the one which is used by enterprises because it provides you support for critical dependencies and it, it, it gives you a fast and minimal response time for technical issues. So, Based on, based on your organization, 
uh, your, your the options would be available for you and you can choose any option. Now let's go and look at resource groups. So I already have a resource group created, multiple resource group created. So that's that's the logical grouping of the resources I was talking about. Let's look at the automation resource group. So if you see, I have a resource under the automation resource group, which is a storage account with the name of automation A744. This is just a random name. So that's how the hierarchy works in Azure. That's it I have for this session. I hope you like the content. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Have a good day.